Hey there, it's Dr. Jim. Thanks for stopping by for some more information on CBD. Today's topic is CBD and Parkinson's disease. And some of the information that I'm going to share with you is from my book, Living Longer and Stronger with CBD. I have a chapter dedicated to CBD and the research findings on neurodegenerative conditions. Parkinson's is one of them, Huntington's, Alzheimer's disease, MS and ALS are some other things that I take a look at in the book. But let me now focus on Parkinson's disease because uh, Parkinson's has become the second most commonly uh, diagnosed neurodegenerative condition out there. It's second only to Alzheimer's disease. And um, there's a lot of research going on right now, some information about neurotoxins, chemicals, pesticides, insecticides being used in the environment, and an increase in the rate of diagnoses across the country, and I think around the world as well. Uh, for instance, there are more men being diagnosed with Parkinson's right now, and particularly, this is a very specific finding, more male farmers are being diagnosed with Parkinson's. What are farmers surrounded by? Many times different chemicals, uh, pesticides, insecticides perhaps, uh, other things that they're using to grow their crops. So a quick overview of Parkinson's I think is in order now. Parkinson's is characterized mainly uh, by the movement symptoms, including tremors, slowness uh, of movement, rigidity, and impaired balance. People affected with the disease also experience what are considered non-motor symptoms like cognitive changes, memory problems, earlier signs of dementia, even things like constipation, low blood pressure, and easily becoming fatigued. Now, here are some numbers. Around 60,000 Americans are diagnosed with a disease annually, every year. And roughly 1 million people are diagnosed with Parkinson's today. Now, the problem with that statistic is that there may be many more who are undiagnosed uh, because Parkinson's has not yet been detected. And Parkinson's disease, unfortunately, is one of those conditions where until the signs and the symptoms are overt, um, clinicians and others may not pick up um, on these symptoms as being associated with Parkinson's disease until it's too late. It's one of those unfortunate disorders where it usually is too late. Um, and it's already begun. It's already started. So um, Parkinson's, let's put it into perspective in terms of prevalence. Parkinson's affect more people um, than MS, multiple sclerosis, and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, combined. Rates of newly diagnosed cases increase with age, making it an age-related, generally speaking, disorder. Around 4% are diagnosed before the age of 50, and that's low the majority are diagnosed after the age of 50. Men appear to be 1.5 times more likely to develop the disorder than are women. Now, there is an important neurotransmitter in our brain, and it's called dopamine. Dopamine has uh, very specific functions, and it is unfortunately targeted by this disease. So neurons um, in a part of the brain called the substantia nigra uh, malfunction, and they eventually die. Some of these neurons are responsible for producing dopamine, which is an important neurotransmitter, responsible for muscle movement and coordination. Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease is something we consider a progressive disease, um, meaning that symptoms become worse over time until the individual is no longer in control of one's own movement. The progression is slow, and only after 70 to 80 percent 
of the nerve cells have been lost do the signs and the symptoms begin to appear, making it a very, very challenging disorder to accurately diagnose and to do so early on. Now, in terms of diagnosis, there are no specific clinical tests to diagnose Parkinson's, most likely. Neurologists will diagnose it after reviewing the person's family history, their medical history, reviewing signs and symptoms that are occurring, and performing neurological and physical examinations. Lab tests can also be used to rule out some other conditions and to make sure that the the clinician is, a, the clinician is on track with the right uh, disorder. Imaging tests are being used like SPECT scans, PETs, MRIs, and CT scans. Now, there are traditional therapies, medications, and treatments, but Parkinson's has no cure whatsoever. The medications that are prescribed can generally help for a while manage symptoms, improve quality of life, symptoms like the motor motor impairment symptoms, um, and for instance, depression, anxiety, constipation, you know, those types of things are many medications for. But with all of these medications, here's an important point. They generally come with side effects. Some might be mild for a while. Others can be moderate side effects. And there are lots of cases where individuals experience side effects that are so difficult that they simply stop taking the medication against their practitioner's <laughs> better judgment but they just feel so bad. They may have hallucinations, delusions, greater fatigue, gastrointestinal problems, memory loss, other cognitive problems. And I do know some individuals with Parkinson's who've taken these medications and they've said, you know what? I, I have this disorder, I have these symptoms, but I feel worse on my medication, okay? So I'm not advocating... Let me make that clear that anybody stop their meds. Uh, you have to be smart about this and you have to work with your clinician. Now let's talk about some research finding. It's out of my book. I've got all, not all, but several research findings that are very encouraging to me, promising. So research on the potential effects of CBD on Parkinson's symptoms in rats. Okay, so there are preclinical studies using animals, mainly rodents, mice, rats, and there are clinical studies which involve humans. This happens to be a rat study. So research on rats began in 2007, believe it or not, and found that CBD has antioxidant properties and reduced oxidative stress leading to neuroprotection. One thing you'll hear me talk about a lot, among all the benefits of CBD, we know it's a powerful antioxidant. We know it's a powerful anti-inflammatory. It, uh, it, it has so many other properties, but it is a neuroprotectant. It has neuroprotective qualities. That's important because these diseases, these neurodegenerative diseases are degeneration over time of neurons or nerves. The very next year, 2008, in a prestigious journal, these aren't coming from nowhere. These are great medical journals. The Journal of Psychopharmacology, Researchers reported that CBD could be useful in people with Parkinson's who experience psychiatric symptoms like hallucinations. For the first time, and this is important, the study declared that CBD is safe and well tolerated for decreasing psychiatric symptoms associated with Parkinson's disease. More studies throughout the years have found that CBD has anti-inflammatory and even, in quotes, memory rescuing effects. These are very, very important, as well as anti-cataleptic effects like muscular rigidity and pain. CBD was also found to help with REM sleep behavior disorder. 
uh, which is characterized by the loss of muscle relaxation during REM sleep, nightmares, and behaviorally acting out during these nightmares. And let me tell you a quick story about, about um, the REM sleep disorder diagnosis. I, um, I was once speaking at a uh, conference. Uh, the topic was Parkinson's disease, and I was a guest speaker, and I was talking about the psychological impact, the emotional impact of Parkinson's. So I've, I've been studying this particular, that was about 20 years ago, believe it or not. Um, anyway, I met another speaker at this conference who was a, um, a young attorney, and by young I mean late 40s, early 50s, and a uh, very nice gentleman, married, uh, we got to chatting, and I asked him, you know, why the interest in Parkinson's disease? And he said, well, I have Parkinson's disease, and it is getting to the point now where I probably won't be able to drive, I probably won't be able to work, and for the past um, year or two, I've been experiencing very severe, um, very colorful, three-dimensional nightmares. And in these nightmares, there are always war-like conflicts going on. Um, I'm in World War II. I'm in World War I. I'm a samurai warrior. I'm being attacked. Uh, my life is being threatened. And as a result, he acted out as he was sleeping in bed with his wife. But he would attack her throughout his dreams as if she were the enemy. It got so bad that um, he had to sleep in a And even then he would get up, leave his room, go into his wife's room and attack her again. So after that, she had to get locks put on her door. So it's been a long time. I haven't heard from him. I, I don't really know how he's doing. But here's my takeaway. Uh, Parkinson's is a devastating neurodegenerative uh, condition. It's, a, it's very slow. And it really takes uh, the quality of life away from a lot of people. It takes their uh, muscular control away from them after um, X amount of years. And while there are therapeutics out there, many of them come with side effects, I am very hopeful that based on the research I've read about, uh, it, it encouraged me so much that I wrote a book with that particular topic in a chapter. Um, it's my hope that people can start living their best life with CBD and that CBD will become a very serious form of medication to help people with Parkinson's disease in the future. So I'm Dr. Jim. Thank you for your time and keep coming back for more information on CBD. Thank you for watching the video, and I'd like to show you my new book, Living Longer and Stronger with CBD. It took me about a year and a half to write as I scanned hundreds of articles in prestigious journals, peer-reviewed medical studies, examining the effects of CBD for various physical conditions, emotional and mental issues, and neurodegenerative conditions. And I condensed all of those findings into one book. I believe that there's something in here for everyone. So if you're interested, follow the link to the book on Amazon. Thank you so much.